After a promising flight from Hanoi on China Southern 737 MAX, it's now time to continue on to see what they're like flying long haul on their 787. Come along and see just how good a $300 flight can be. Ni hao everybody and welcome back to another trip report. Today I'm here at Guangzhou's Baiyun International Airport and today I'm going to be flying China Southern on board a Boeing 787-9 from here in Guangzhou back home to Melbourne in Australia. Alright, so I just arrived off another China Southern flight, so let's head down here and see what the transfer process is like. Since I have a boarding pass for my next flight, I can transfer to my next flight without having to go through the entire immigration process. The transit security process was thorough but pretty quick and efficient. Now that we're airside, I thought I'd just see how much lounge access would cost. I was told that access could be purchased for a pretty standard price of 36 US dollars or roughly 55 Australian dollars. Since there wouldn't be that much time to enjoy the lounge, I decided to get a snack somewhere else. There's multiple places to get something to eat or do some shopping, but it does seem like there's still a lot of shops that are either closed or under construction, possibly still as a result of the pandemic. While we take a look around the terminal, allow me to tell you a bit about this airport. The current Guangzhou Baiyun International Airport opened in 2004. I say current because before 2004, there was another airport with the same name, but was closed once this airport opened. Baiyun means white cloud in Chinese and the former airport got its name from the nearby Baiyun Mountain, though the new airport isn't as close to Baiyun Mountain. There's two terminals at this airport. China Southern primarily uses Terminal 2, which is where we are now. Terminal 2 is the newest of the two terminals and was opened in 2018. It's also one of the largest airport terminals in the world. The airport was kept at a good temperature and was light and modern. As for seating, there was plenty available, but there was limited universal power sockets. Also, I believe I noticed some areas where you can relax in a couch. I did notice that there was information kiosks around the terminal and it was well signed. I also found the terminal to be generally pretty spacious. So overall, a great terminal to spend a couple hours in, though I do hope that some more shops and restaurants will reopen soon. After looking around the terminal and our gate, I went to get some dumplings, which were from memory tasty and well priced. Here's our ride to Melbourne. This is Bravo 1128. A 2018 built Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner delivered new to China Southern Airlines. China Southern Airlines has a total of 27 787s in its fleet, 17 of which are the Dash 9 variant, with the remaining being the Dash 8. All of China Southern 787s have the Wings of Dreams special livery, which I personally really like. What do you think of it? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Just before boarding, I asked out of interest how much an upgrade would be, which was 11,000 Chinese yuan, or around 2,300 Australian dollars. Thanks! But no thanks. Boarding soon started 10 minutes early. During boarding, both the gate staff and the onboard staff were friendly. Hello. Welcome on board China Southern's Boeing 787-9. This one is in a two-class configuration. Nine of China Southern's 787-9s are in a two-class configuration, with the remaining eight being in a three-class configuration, which includes premium economy. On the two-class aircraft, including this one, there's 28 Thompson Aero Vantage XL seats in business yeah. class in a 1-2-1 layout, and behind that there's 269 Collins Aerospace Meridian seats in economy class in a 3-3-3 layout. My seat for today is 54A. By the way, I did notice that the temperature on board is being kept at a nice and coolish temperature. Now let's take a quick look at the seat features. Legroom is really good at 32 inches, but it felt like a bit more, and the width was solid. At the bottom of the seat there's a footrest, and above that there's a seat back pocket containing a safety card, sick bag and some headphones. There's also a tray table which you can move back and forth, and it's also foldable. The seatback IV is on the larger side. Underneath it there's a headphone jack and a USB-A port. Controls including a flight attendant call button and overhead reading light are on the side of the IFE screen. Of course, below the window you've got the signature 787 window dimmer. There's a universal power socket underneath the seat in front. There's two for every three seats, meaning that they might have to be shared. There's a headrest which was seemingly only adjustable on the sides. And same as the 737 Max I flew on, the papery headrest cover isn't great and makes a bit of noise. As is common on newer planes, there's no adjustable overhead air vents. Overall, it's a great seat on board China Southern 787-9. Two minor things that were missing though was a coat hook and the headrest being adjustable vertically. But it's still overall a great and comfortable seat. Waiting for me on the seat was both a pillow and a blanket. Thank you for 
As the safety video continues, it's now time for pushback. Something you don't see every day is this Air Tanzania 787. What a cool plane to see! Now that we're well on our way to cruising altitude, let's take a look at the in-flight entertainment. The IFE offers movies, TV shows, music, games, a kids section and more. From my counting, there was 153 Hollywood movies and many more from other categories, which is definitely enough to keep me entertained for this 8.5 hour flight. The moving map system used is the Panasonic Voyager 3D, a common but older system. It still provides plenty of information though. I should note that I believe China Southern's A350s have a newer in-flight map system installed. Lastly, the IFE was pretty responsive. So overall, it's a great entertainment screen which has a great selection of movies and all of the normal features. Moving on to the Wi-Fi, which for economy class passengers was available for purchase. It was quite expensive, with messaging being 79 Chinese yuan or around 16 Australian dollars. But I do appreciate that it's available. By the way, the headphones were very basic. They did the job, but I did struggle to hear from them. As we reached cruising altitude, the crew came around beginning the dinner service with a drink service. Some of the drinks on offer were water, coffee, tea, apple juice, peach juice, soft drinks and wine. 
There might have been more, but that's all I noted. A sanitary wipe was provided along with the drink of choice, which in my case was a peach juice and a Chinese tea. The peach juice was sweet and very nice, and the Chinese tea was also good. The food trolley soon followed, which was about 40 minutes after takeoff. The options for the meal was chicken with potatoes or pork rice. I opted for the pork rice, which came along with a warm bread roll served from a basket with butter on the side, along with the vanilla biscuit type thing, a ham salad, a little pastry, I believe this was still my tea from earlier, and lastly the plastic cutlery was in this packet. The bread roll was very nice with some butter, it tasted a little similar to a brioche bun. The main meal was pork with rice, served with half an egg and some veggies. I found it to be delicious. The rice was a little bit like plain sticky rice and there was plenty of sauce which had a great flavour. Before I had even finished my meal, about 15 minutes after my meal was served, the crew did another full drink service. This time I got a Sprite. The vanilla biscuit was pretty tasty and the pastry which had some kind of paste in it was quite nice. Lastly, the ham salad was okay. Just a basic ham salad. Overall, a great and very efficient dinner service from China Southern. The pork rice in particular was very tasty. I was very impressed that in approximately 35 minutes, the crew got to me with two full drink services, a full meal service and a round of rubbish collection, while still being friendly. By the way, by the time the dinner service concluded, it was only about 1 hour and 15 minutes after takeoff. Following the service, arrival cards were handed out. Before I get some rest, it's time for a quick loo review. The lavatory had all of the normal things for an airplane lavatory, but no additional amenities. I found it to be somewhat spacious, but it was a bit smelly. Because there wasn't any in the lavatory, and I forgot mine, I asked a very friendly crew for a toothbrush in case they had some available upon request. They gave me an amenity kit which had a toothbrush in it, which I thought was really nice, and I very much appreciated. Please note it's not an amenity that you should expect to be available. After I'd had a comfy night's sleep, about two hours before landing, the crew handed out refreshing towels. A much appreciated and surprising touch that not many airlines offer. The seat moves forward when it reclines, and the recline is very good. So along with the great legroom, I managed to get about three hours of sleep, which I believe is the most sleep I got on any flight I took in 2023. By the way, the padding was pretty solid, but also nothing unusual. Not long later, the breakfast service began with drinks, with water, tea, coffee, and the same apple juice and peach juice on offer. I went for a peach juice and a tea. The food trolley soon followed, with the options being Chinese dim sum or scrambled eggs. As someone who loves Chinese food, the choice was a no-brainer for me. I went for the dim sum for the main meal, which was served alongside a cinnamon pastry and jam, salt and pepper, which I assume was for the dim sum, there was also some fresh fruit, fermented milk, and the same cutlery packet as last night. The dim sum consisted of lap cheng bao, Chinese sausage buns, a pork siu mai, a green thing with meat and prawn inside, I'm not sure what it's called so if you know please let me know in the comments, and lastly some sticky rice which I think was wrapped in bamboo leaves. Straight after the meal service the crew came around with a second drink service once again. This time I opted for an apple juice and water. The cinnamon pastry tasted very nice, both the fruit and fermented milk tasted good, and all of the dim sum were very tasty. So overall, Another delicious and great meal service from China Southern. Once again, the crew were very friendly and I was served all of that in about half an hour. The IFE is adjustable, which I forgot to mention earlier. The cabin was relatively quiet and kept at a good temperature throughout the flight. As we descend into Melbourne, allow me to conclude my trip with China Southern. My journey with China Southern Airlines started with flying from Hanoi to Guangzhou on China Southern 737 MAX. A separate trip report is out for that flight, but in summary, it was a short but great flight. Transiting in Guangzhou was pretty quick and easy. And even though not everything was open, I still enjoyed my time at the airport. On board China Southern 787-9, I found the seat to be spacious and with all the necessary features. The in-flight entertainment screen exceeded my expectations with plenty of movies and TV shows on offer. Both dinner and breakfast services were delicious a good size and very efficient. Thanks to how quick both services were, there was plenty of time to get some good rest, which meant I didn't arrive feeling like I was half asleep. 
which is unusual for me after a red-eye flight. The cabin crew were very friendly and helpful throughout the flight and will soon pull into the gate in Melbourne 20 minutes early. So overall, I had a fantastic flight with China Southern, especially considering the price. Speaking of, let's talk a bit about the price. I paid about 380 Australian dollars to get from Hanoi to Melbourne via Guangzhou with China Southern, which as I said in my 737 MAX review is an amazing deal. Considering for example Cathay Pacific is normally around $715 or Vietnam Airlines which is on the cheaper side for a full service airline is normally around $550. So the $380 price tag that China Southern and Charmin Air often offers for many routes across Southeast and East Asia really is a fantastic deal. With China Southern it's not as good as Singapore Airlines or Cathay Pacific, but it's almost half the price and still offers fantastic service and incredible value for money. There's definitely still room for improvement though. For example, the headphones which I could barely hear from, but I can't really complain considering the price. In summary, China Southern is a great airline which offers incredible value for money and I would highly recommend them, and the price is actually not too good to be true. On the route from Guangzhou to Melbourne, China Southern currently offers one or two daily flights, but during peak season, which is around summertime in Australia, there can be up to to three daily flights. When I booked this flight, it was scheduled to be on an A350, but was changed to the 787-9 that we ended up on. Currently, all flights on the route are on the 787, but in November, the 787 and A350 are both scheduled to have a daily flight each. Lastly, I wasn't able to change my seats online, and so emailed China Southern to see if they could do it, and I was expecting it to take at least a day to get a response. But China Southern responded to my first email in only 14 minutes, and they were very helpful. I must say, I was quite impressed by that. Anyways, now enjoy the landing at Melbourne Tullamarine International Airport on runway 16. pulling into the gate 20 minutes early. Since we arrived early, we had to wait on the taxiway for a few minutes. As we disembark after another amazing trip, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching today's video. A like and subscription if you enjoyed would help me out a lot with growing the channel and would be very much appreciated but it's not necessary nor expected. By the way, I did live updates on my Instagram at aviation763 underscore, so you can check that out if you'd like. Last but most certainly not least, thank you to all of my incredible Patreons for helping to make these videos possible. Their support is truly so much appreciated and I couldn't do what I do without them. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching and coming along 
on this trip with me. I hope you have an amazing day and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in my next one next Saturday at 5pm Melbourne time.